I want to try to say this the right way. Not because I'm worried about what people might think as far as being upset or offended by this, but just to be pretty accurate. With the level of authority that God gives in the household between the husband and the wife, it's not that the man owns his wife, but just about. Like that's kind of, the, I mean, that's like the level of authority that God's given. The Bible doesn't use it as just, as if the, the one's just some piece of property. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's not trying to dehumanize the, the wife or the woman, but just with that level of authority that God has given over his wife and over the possessions and everything else. And, um, and even just going back to the creation of the woman, um, you know, the woman leaves the house of her family to become one flesh with her husband and to take his name. So, I know we have some weird things going on today where you've got men dropping their names and taking their wives' last names and hyphenating names and doing all this stuff because they're trying to be politically correct. And that is the stupidest thing ever. You get people just, just hyphenating names. And we're going to keep hyphenating and hyphenating. and hy like, like, what if you continue that down and say, well, the right thing to do is just to hyphenate and combine names. So let's hyphenate. And now our kids, when they get married, they're going to hyphenate. Well... The kid's last name is already going to be hyphenated, right? So, <laughs> so what, what if they do that and then they hyphenate from, from you know, like, th let's say you have a son and his name's hyphenated. And then, oh, he meets this girl. Well, now we're going to add another hyphen to our last name and then we're going to pass that on to our children, right? So you're going to be, end up with this, this string of just this super long name. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. But see, God gave us the example in Scripture. Genesis chapter 5, look at verse number 2. The Bible says, Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. It doesn't say he called his name Adam. It says it calls their name Adam. Why? In chapter 5, this is after they have already established, you know, Therefore shall man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Husband and wife come together. They become one person, one flesh. And the wife takes the name of the husband. That's the biblical model. And it makes sense because the husband is the one in charge of everything. He's the head of the household. The head of the household is known by the name. The name of the father they didn't want to have get lost. The name is what wants to uh, continue on that name. It's the name of the husband. It's the name of the leader. The husband is supposed to be the one directing the family and saying, we're going to go this way. That's why the wife was even created because it wasn't good for the man to be alone. Flip back to Genesis chapter 2. The woman falls under the house and authority of her husband. And basically, she goes from being under the house and authority of her father because dad's in charge to leaving father and mother to going then under the authority of her husband. And her, her, her entire identity is tied to her husband by taking his name and as it says here, look at Genesis chapter 2, 18. The Bible says, And the Lord, said, uh, the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. This was before Eve was created. The reason why God created woman was to be a help for the man. For the man not to be alone and to help the man. This is what the word of God says. You don't have to like it. I love it. It's not just because I'm a man. I just love it because it's the word of God, because God tells us the truth. But this is also why, when I was speaking, this does not degrade or devalue women at all. It's just their job. It's just a job. Now you say, yeah, but their job isn't as... Uh, you know, as glamorous or, or, or isn't as honorable or whatever. Well, how often in Scripture do you find that the, the least 
comely things, the less honorable things in this world are the ones that God elevates even more and honors and exalts. Those that have less abilities, God exalts. Those that, have, you know, that are put in a worse position, hey, God's fighting for them. More than anyone. I mean, that is a theme throughout all of Scripture. And if you don't know that, you haven't read your Bible one time ever. 